Fresh. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fresh, hosted by everyone. Sorry. Talo falava, malo lava so for mawa malilangi ma. Welcome to Fresh, hosted by everybody. My name is Lawrence Gustav Bell. I'm a producer here at I Spy Radio, and I'm tuning in from Apia Samoa. Kia ora te fano, ko kari kura kapi o tōku ingoa, anti in the forest, getting away from the chaos. It's worldwide fresh this season, fresh from the people, for the people. Keeping it fresh, worldwide, for the people, from the people. Here's what's coming up on your show for today. Here's what's coming up next on the show. RNZ Sports taking advantage of Pacifica athletes. Today, we're talking New Zealand sports. Are they down with the brown, or are they downing the brown? You better say it with your chest. Shadon is not apologetic. Well, is what he just made, dude. So it's, I feel like that's art. It's beautiful. The words are very powerful, and it just reminded me of my nana. Have they been using brown writers for the script? Cook the man some eggs! Okay, maybe there are no brown riders. Mm. Yep. Tyler for love, everybody. I'm poetic, and this is Did You Know. Now, if you ain't from the ghetto, don't come to the ghetto. Unless you got a pass or fit. I'm known for hip hop, that's how I get down. Some days you make a million dollars, some days you make nothing. So, in order to put bread and butter on the table, we venture out and do a couple of other things, and this is what it's about. So, this right here, this is the Fale Valley, aka the G Rods. This is where we get everything prepped for the outgoing. That's on the online store and also the market. So, everything you see hanging up here is getting ready for the market run in Auckland on the weekends. I made a hundred off of clothing. Spent it on the music just to stay independent. Yeah, so this is how we fund the music, by this business here. And it all goes full circle, comes back around with touring as well. This actually started with 30 t-shirts out the trunk of my car. Every weekend we're at the markets, Thursday to Sunday. And uh, we got five different CDs here for sale. And we also got 113 different garments at the moment. All right, we're now over here at the Common Goods Live Print Warehouse. This is where all the magic happens, like this, you know what I'm saying? Come in. Follow me in. We started this from nothing, bro, from a dream. Dollar in a dream. We started in the chicken shack in Mokoto. Mok we started on Sabo first, and then we came to New Zealand. Like, hey, give it a go, and here we go. For the village. For the village. This is 685 music. So the order will come. I think that order's from Russia, I think. You know? That's the one. So two t-shirts. So we get two of these. Boom. Straight to Russia. The island way, the Fatsamo that we were raised with, is to serve. You serve the village, you serve the people, you serve God and your family. So we incorporate that into our brand. Everything we do is for the village. We're going to Manhattan to drop off a special package. So when it's like that, sometimes we can uh, do these little drops when I got time in between meetings and stuff. For me, one of the hardest things to do when you're hustling at the markets is pulling up on, on a bad day. And a bad day could mean you might sell one t-shirt. That's not even enough to pay your, your rent for your table. Those days are the hardest to get through. But one thing that I learned from it, is to always stay working, always stay moving forward. Hard work is how you come up, that's how you build your name. It's Hustle always cool to wake up and not answer to nobody, you know what I mean? Like, I like the fact that we're our own business, our own boss, we're independent, we get to do things the way we want to do things. And you got more space to grow that way. This is a, a still a young business for us, but we've left so much room to grow and get bigger, so we're just trusting the process and enjoying the journey, you know what I'm saying? It's time for some fresh comedy. Oh, hey, lads. Oh, fuck you. Oh, ciao. Rafati. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, auditioning for uh, Hobson Shaw too, eh? Exciting stuff? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's great we get these opportunities to play strong Pacific characters in major motion pictures. I mean, how wonderful is it that we get to showcase our diverse cultures?
Poe Heku. Poe Heku, you're up next. Hey, all the best, eh? Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. All right. Have you ever been to an audition here before? No, I haven't. But you know, it's good to check out the new casting agents, eh? Mm, Make yes. sure they know you're out there. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Hey, go outside. Get my gentle. No, so I can put it on and walk all over your face for eating my eleni. Were you given much of a brief around what they're doing for the audition today? No, nah, not really. I was just told it was going to be a heavily improv-based audition. You know, almost reality TV style format. Okay, wow. I mean, they're really changing it up with this movie, eh? Yeah. Mm. I put $5 on the Lacey Brown horse, $10 on White Lightning. Yeah, $6 on No Trouble, and the rest of my wins, ma no, 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 winnings, wins. Yeah, wins money on Fina to Fab Philly. Uh, do you know much about the character? Nah, I think they're just casting the net out to see who's out there. Nah, sir, I have not had anything to drink this evening. What do you mean that's a failed test? Sir, why are you smashing my brake lights? I'm not resisting arrest. Look, I'm I'm complying. Ah, hey, this is uh, this is uncalled for. I'm complying. But yeah, the character's description is so open. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. I mean, it says right in the script, you know, they're looking for a Maori or Polynesian male, five foot ten to six foot two, aged between twenty four and thirty five. You know, I really love the lengths in which this casting agency has gone into creating such an authentic and immersive experience. Uh, uncle, can I borrow five bucks? Oh, you're scared. You know I don't got a job. Have they been using brown writers for the script? Yeah, I think they're all Māori and Pacifica. Okay. Cook the man some eggs. Maybe one or two of them. Auntie, had all the stuff. Nah, the important stuff. The corned beef, the mutton flaps. It's the dawn raids. Okay, maybe there are no brown riders. Mm, yep. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. Empty the cash register and give it the last two. Not the black jelly bean. What? Do I look like an animal to you? Give me the raspberry twist. <laughs> ah, run, 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 run. This thing just out loud. Go, 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 out the back. Who got shot? Oh, I'll leave him. That was awesome. I think I nailed it. Hey, uh, you guys need some blood packs? Nah. Do you guys need handcuffs? No? All right. Uh, do you guys need ankle monitors? Nah? All right then, well, hey, uh, good luck, all the best, eh? See you guys later. <sighs> oh, hell no! You're up next. Oh, um, I just remembered I have to be somewhere. Yeah, I've got to take my mum to church. Oh, CO, you're not leaving too, are you? Yeah, i got to shoot off. Um, I've got to read out the bingo numbers after church for his mum. Oh, well, that's a real shame, guys. Well, look, thanks for coming in. Uh, cheese. <laughs> OK, do you mind just leaving your details so if anything comes up, we can just look you up in our system? Oh, hell no. <laughs> The twist and rats are godlike physiques. I love seeing a really strong Samoan man sit in his vulnerability. We're seeing a different type of Pacific storytelling. Bottom line, I don't like that we are poaching players from the islands, and I think it's because we're not looking after who they are before who you can make them. It's a beautiful day here in Samoa, and you are watching Fresh. Kia ora, I'm Joel. Kia ora, I'm Miharo. We're LAV, and you're watching, watching Fresh TV. TV. What up, Freshies? I'm Shadow Meredith. I'm an actor, writer, father, and I'm here at Basement Theatre with my show, Waiting, which is opening tonight. And this is Young, Gifted and... Young? Yep. I'll take that. Young, Gifted and Brown. We can do it easy or the hard way. Captain of my crew.
Cool, I'll take you through to the basement studio, which is upstairs. Come this way. Waiting is a show that I've made from uh, Nelson Fringe 2017. That stands peacefully in its independence. The people from the sun. <laughs> and it was made at my wife's um, family home. Uh, we were down in Nelson because we were looking after Amelia's mum. We had like two weeks to make it and it was all my poetry. Amelia managed to put all of it together inside a letter to my son. This is where I'm going to perform on the set, on the stage, and this is the audience. And that's my wife, who's also my director. This is Amelia, and this is Phil, who's our tech. Yeah! From 1991, watching as my sister's mint tip top trumpet melts into her hair, across her face, and colonizes her sticky fingers. Ooh! Don't touch me with your sticky fingers, oi! And this is backstage, the dressing room. Uh, this is where I usually get changed into my costume, which I'm wearing. And I usually do a couple of warm-ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. I studied acting at the New Zealand Drum School, Toi Whakati. Um, I also studied at New Zealand College of Performing Arts. Um, so yeah, I did about five years of training uh, for acting. Not that you need it, but uh, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> what do I love about theatre? I think I love being in front of an audience. It's live, you have to problem solve on the spot and you have to tell that story. And people will tell you if it's, you know, if it's not going so well, but also they'll celebrate it if it is and they want you to win. That's what I love about theatre. Nana sits downstairs now, waiting for time to pass. Stairs have become her enemy. Those darn stairs. Yeah, we just came out of waiting and I'm feeling really honoured that I could be in the audience this evening. Just seeing a different type of Pacific storytelling. I love seeing a really strong Samoan man sit in his vulnerability. It was beautiful. The words are very powerful and it just reminded me of my nana because he talks a lot about his relationship with his nana. Love seeing his grandma. That's my grandma. <laughs> My Nana is heavily present in the show. My Nana uh, played a huge part of my life. Mum had me when she was 19, and um, yeah, Nana helped raise me. Yeah, Sunday lunches, tōnā'i, that, uh, that was a jam. I talk about the, the lessons she gave me as a, as a teacher um, through her cooking and her table. The ancient storytelling tatao that twists and wraps our godlike physiques. The traditions that swallow our mind and spew out the most beautiful stories of myths gone by. Yeah, it just means to be in a space like that and walk out like a different person than when you walked in because, you know, something just got put on your heart. We, he was talking about one of the bros. I, I left the thing feeling, oh, okay. I tend to think of the, also like the new Spider-Man from Spider-Verse. <laughs> Weave out, i.e. superheroes don't die. When he spoke about one of his really good friends that passed away and just the way that he held that particular topic and situation with such honour and love. Yeah, I really love that one. I feel like people should come because Shadon is not apologetic with his, what he just made. Yeah, so it's, I feel like that's art. I tend to heave like I've been sucker punched with that. I.e. Uh, the guilt overrides me for not checking in on the uso. The show has some mental health stuff that I, I deal with. We've got to look out for each other. And also, I've got to look out for me, especially being a dad. Here, I'm searching for the stars, my little boy. Digging deep into foreign lands. Finding myself. Not my Samoanness or my New Zealandness. Myself. Hey, look. I'm trying to hustle for mine. Feel like everybody hit on my line. Can't put a cap on the grind. No, sir. And I wish I'm just wondering why it is that we're overrepresented in rugby and underrepresented in cricket, golf. I think there's social barriers, financial barriers. Right. And they kind of want to stay away from saying, oh, our people don't like those sports because look at Tony Finau.
Yes, yeah, up in love. It's your boy Lawrence Brown with the Feed Joy section, and you are watching Fresh TV. Let's get Hello, soy Fua. I am Christian Marietto Brown, and you are watching Fresh. Welcome back to Fresh, and welcome to our Fresh panel show, where if you got something to say, you better say it with your chest. Pacific Peoples, we're physically built to dominate sports, something rugby and netball have been cashing in on for decades. Some of our most wealthiest and famous athletes are of Pacific heritage, but are NZ Sports taking advantage of Pacifica athletes? Today, we're talking New Zealand sports. Are they down with the brown, or are they downing the brown? So, does poaching Pacifica players from the islands provide or limit opportunity? What do you think? In an effort to make everything about myself, I do have a story about this. Good, good, good. So, I am one of these players, however, I wasn't taken from the islands. So, I grew up up north in the Bay of Islands. I was spotted and taken. So, I mean, parents knew about it, don't yeah. they? <laughs> I was 14 and I moved to Auckland and I lived with just like a bit of an elderly couple. I hated every second of it because um, it was really hard for me to come from a really loud moving house to nobody. My school, Bay of Islands College, had about 300 students and then I went to Massey High and there were like 3,000 and so there were just people everywhere and there's a lot of like how I grew up was very different to what I had to adapt to. Bottom line, I don't like that we are poaching players from the islands and I think it's because we're not looking after who they are before who you can make them. I just worry about them. Um, especially knowing that money's starting to become a thing. From what I can see, there is two sides to it. There is some different negatives to pulling uh, Pacifica players, athletes out of their home country and then putting them into like a New Zealand environment. Well, I'm like, I really want them to be an athlete from their own original country and I want them to represent their country and make a lot of money. The fact is, some of those kids will never get that opportunity unless they come to New Zealand and they integrate into like a New Zealand school. The argument is, if they, if they didn't have that, like, would they have that opportunity necessarily in the islands? But I think that's the question, eh, is like, are uh, sports people being, being supported in like a holistic level, not just to play sports? So it's clear that Pacific bodies are naturally athletic. I'm just wondering why it is that we're overrepresented in rugby and underrepresented in cricket, golf. I think there's social barriers, financial barriers. Right. And they kind of want to stay away from saying, oh, our people don't like those sports because look at Tony Finau, you know, look at, you know, in football, someone give me a bus a football player. Come on. <laughs> um, Winston, Winston Reed. Reed. Yeah, Winston, yeah, Reed. Yeah. Winston Reed. I played a lot of rugby growing up, but I loved playing cricket. But the thing that set back my family a lot was how much it cost, eh? That's the financial barrier. Then there's the social and cultural barrier. You'll go to cricket. No one else is thinking it, but in your mind you're going, I'm the only brown guy in this team. Yeah. I and mean, then you can't wait to play the other team that has the other brown guy. <laughs> He's betting and you're like, oh, got you, we'll see. <laughs> you finished playing at 19? Forced. I finished at 22. Actually, Did you, yeah. and that was through injury, right? Injury, yeah. Were you supported? Like, it's like, if you would like to come back, this is how we are, but if you don't want to, then how can we help you find a job or move forward? Did any of that happen for you? What helped was parents mm -hmm. and a dad who always said, like, hey, like, you've got to have options. I feel like that's where the issue lies, is that not everyone has um, the values that you, your parents have instilled in you to understand that life will go on, but the system that brought you here didn't even try and persuade you to come back. Like, oh, it's you're young, like your ACL will come back, we'll get you a fake one, and you'll come back in like 12 months, like you'll See, be sweet. I hadn't been professional yet though. I didn't make a cent from rugby. No, So but... that's the thing, I think. Do you, don't, do you think there's a bit of a difference? Like, you're on the fringe of cracking it even before you make professional, like it's much easier for someone who's making it and getting paid to rehab and coming back. I do strongly believe that going forward we, we need to culturally understand who we are taking and where we're taking these kids from. It feels like we only plan for success. And when we don't get it, it whether it via injury or they're not as good as you thought they were when you saw them, because that can be a really disastrous domino effect, um, not only for this person, but their family and where you've taken them from. Do you think that this pressure that we put on young men and the lack of support that we provide for them is a contributing factor to the deterioration of their mental health? 
definitely about that. It was a long yeah. discussion as well. I think yeah, it's it's another topic altogether. But it's but it's definitely part of um, what we have seen in the past with our young men, you know, unfortunately taking their own lives because the pressure is mm. so heavy on them. There is a, a whole other argument in terms of mental health when it comes to our young men playing professional sport and young women as well. Mm. Just thinking about it now, because you guys have got me thinking about it. Like I had family, I had a place and a setting that I was familiar with, so you can find your roots again. But you get players that come over here and don't even have that. That that adds to it as well. He's lucky that when he actually did his knee and he fell onto the ground, he grabbed it and went, oh! <laughs> and the coach came up and said, you should get into it. You should get into some drama, some opera or something. Oh, <laughs> he <laughs> held that long, bro. <laughs> Let's get it, let's go. I was just sleeping on flows. Now I'm on top of the glow. I can't see no more, I can't see no more. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. Make sure you tune in next week for some more poly freshness. And that's all we've got time for today, Fresh fans. Tune in next week for more. Make sure you tune in same time, same channel next week. Shout out to all the Dutch and Duchesses of South Akinani. Love from your grace. Keep it felicity and always stay sticky. Keep it fresh. Hide it up. Later. Oh, they tried to weigh you down, but now you on your way up. So here are a few tips on how to deal with slut shaming. In the past few years, there have been some pretty big conversations over what is female empowerment. I am who I am because I am who I am. Obviously, this doesn't sit well with some people who are a little bit more conservative, and that's fine. That's my opinion! Hello, everyone. My name is Sukin Kaysaya, and I'm opening for LAB on Young, Gifted, and Brown.